squirming emergence from the lost caverns of Ixen lets you bring back some insane value from the graveyard. All you gotta do is just fuel it a little bit and you'll get access to some sweet cards. Astral's Flame here, tapping out to talk about Sultai Self Mill with Squirming Emergence. But just like I'm tapping out, you should tap that subscribe button to stay updated on all the new decks coming out for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan meta. And with that, let's get into Sultai Self Mill and the whole strategy revolving around that new card, Squirming Emergence, this three mana sorcery with Fathomless Descent. We get to bring back any non land permanent card in our graveyard with mana value less than or equal to the number of permanent cards in our graveyard. So the whole strategy of this deck revolves around self-mill, filling the graveyard, and getting something back that we want. Primarily, that is going to be one of our key creatures or five of our Jubilant Brawler. What are our key creatures, you ask? Well, that is coming in the way of Cruel Somnophage, Souls of the Lost, and the Urborg Lurgoyf. All of these get bigger from different effects of types of cards in our graveyard. Urborg Lurgoy, for example, is going to get power and toughness equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard, with the toughness being plus one, so it doesn't auto-die when it comes into play. When we get into Souls of the Lost, this is our big one. This is from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. And while you do have to sacrifice a permanent or discard a card, oh no, uh, to pay its cost as you cast it, it also has Fathomless Descent, just like Squirming Emergence. This is going to make its power and toughness equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard, with the toughness being plus one. So again, it does not die. Our last include here is the Cruel Somnophage with power toughness equal to the total number of creatures in all graveyards. So your opponent is gonna fuel the Somnophage, you're fueling the Somnophage. You've got a great selection of creatures that you could potentially bring back with Skirming Emergence. With that too though, we also have Tyvar the Jubilant Brawler. Tyvar here does one thing for us that we love. Milling three cards, well, two things, I guess, milling three cards and getting to return a creature card with mana value two or less back, which is going to let you bring back the Somnophage, the Souls of the Lost, or the Urborg Lurgoyf. This is huge. This is recursive value to keep bringing back your big creatures, even if your opponent removes it. Pair that with Squirming Emergence, suddenly, even if Tyvar dies, you're going to be able to bring Tyvar back and keep recurring back your creatures. It's a never ending army, and eventually these are going to get so big, your opponent is just not know. Um, isn't going to know what to do with them like at all. However, there is one downside to these creatures, though, right? They do need fuel in the graveyard. And while something like Souls of the Lost helps you do that, or the Cruel Somnophage, and even Lurgoyf, if you kick it, you do need other factors to fill your bin. That is where our Blanchard Prowler is going to come in here, letting you mill three cards, fill the bin, and get a land, hopefully, so you can play that in, hit your creature drops. We've got the Gnawing Vermin, milling two cards, acting as a nice early uh, deterrent, against attacks from your opponent if they're playing creatures. And we're also jamming in the Blossom Tortoise, milling, hitting land drops, and that is going to be pivotal to keep our bin filled of good fuel. That is going to make the Souls of the Lost huge. The other downside to this, while they do need cards in the graveyard, is none of our creatures have trample. So if our opponent just has a bunch of 1-1 blockers, how do we get through? Well, that's going to be thanks to Audacity. We're going to not only buff the creature, we're giving that creature trample. So suddenly your 2020 plus Souls of the Lost well, it's got trampled. It doesn't really matter what your opponent blocks with it. They're probably going to die, <laughs> which is great. We do have a few other strategies, though, that kind of pair in while we are going for the self mill plan. The bonus with running the Blossoming Tortoise in this list is we do have access to some creature lands, such as the Res Restless Reef, the Restless Cottage, and the Restless Vinestalk. So Blossoming Tortoise, while not only fueling our bin, is going to help reduce the cost to animate these lands, we can use the Vine Stock to start pumping in 5 power damage and forcing one of our opponent's creatures to be very small if it's large. We can use the Restless Cottage to eat away at annoying spells in our opponent's graveyard and get some food to stabilize and stay alive. And lastly, the Restless Reef, either milling ourselves for a bit of extra fuel or milling our opponent. When we get talking about the sideboard though, a very, very straightforward sideboard in this kind of case, we play a lot of permanents. Deep Cavern Bat is going to come in for those matchups where you need hand information and you want to stop your opponent from casting spells. Canker Bloom, great for those enchantment matchups. Goodbye, Leyline Binding. No worry there. Tasha's Tide Binder, similar kind of thought. Being able to counter an activation of an ability from an opponent's card, very key. Uh, Virtue of Persistence, great recursive in the late game. Very nice early game removal. And your opponent's got a lot of board clears or destroy effects. 
but Skullborn Nexus is amazing to bring in because this will just be a two mana spell, by that point, and then suddenly all your creatures that die replace themselves with more creatures to push in the damage. But Dragonauts, this is Saltai squirming self mill. Please enjoy the game. Oh, it's really close to being keepable. This is definitely keepable. Uh, we can go with the Largoif back. Market no. All right, that is a thing. Burst currently a one two. Fabrication Foundry, sure. Really need another Tyver. I am just gonna play into Urborg Lurgoyf here. Unkicked. And we'll say no attacks and pass. Smithy deck. Alright, okay, that's fine. Skirming coming in, that's fine. Uh let's go ahead and mill us for four cards. Got a four five now. Okay, Mark and Gnome goes down. Smithy is down to a 3 3. They don't have the artifacts to tab. So we can tie our back and get back another Somnophage or Souls of the Lost. Cation Foundry is 5 5. I mean, opponent currently has one creature versus ours, right? So, like, I just cast in Tyvar here. We just minus three. And I'm going to bring back a Souls of the Lost. We'll say no attacks. Okay, land into play tab, leaving himself into a deep pop. Well, that's rude. Uh, let's go for Prowler and find a land. Or not. Lots of yikes. Yikes. I kind of need to land off there. Alright, that's fine. Sure, get a 5-5. Five, five. At least we can tie our tie bar. They're down to only a few cards in hand. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and attack Tyvar. I will happily block my friend. I am completely okay with that. And this taps them out. Souls of the Lost is bigger now. We can tie our Tyvar. Go ahead, we'll bring back. Where's my Souls of the Lost? Let's go ahead and Tyvar. Do it again. Grab a full cool Somnophage this time. Okay. So, like, this is going a lot better than what we were trying to do. The animation stuff. That's fine. Waste the power, yeah. And like I, I know what you're what you're saying with uh with respect to like Bling Yuk, and I, I agree, like Bling would make this deck amazing. And I, I have a fling version that's not quite like this, but it's very close. Alright, let's go Souls of the Lost. Sack a permanent. I'll go ahead and sack a land. I kind of want to go for the Squirming Emergence, but I'm just going to go and attack here. We'll force blocks on them.
plus one off our Tyvar, and we're gonna cast in the Cruel Somni Page. Okay. Okay. A lot of people are running that field of room. Yep, that's only that's only eight eights. Big boys, yeah, I think this is just working like better. Like even if they blow up my lands, like I I run the basics. I don't know if I've milled. Them. I've milled two, so if they blow them up, it's fine. It's fine. Sure. That's fine. Makes my souls of the lost bigger. Looking at the number of squirming viable and I was how big can I care? Well right now we can bring back something for mana value 19 or less. So pretty good. So what does this thing do? Creature tokens get that. Oh that's fine. Uh do I have anything that's stopping me from attacking? Oops. Not a bad oppo. Uh there's none. No card in magic has 19 mana. The highest converted mana cost that exists in magic as a legal card is at present uh only 16. The the highest mana cost on card overall is 99 for the Big Furry Monster, but Big Furry Monster is not a legal card. It's the one blue affinity card. EK, what's going on, bud? How you doing tonight? Welcome in. And I guess they get more tokens, but like... I'm just kind of doing the thing here. I still have, like, cards left that I need to be careful of. Um... I'm gonna just bring back the full Sonda page. We'll sack a permanent. I'm gonna sack Tyver here. It's a wide card, right? Yeah, it is. Alright, Oppo, what you got? This is still game one, but yeah, Draco is technically the biggest legal card for mana cost wise. All right, we have blocked everything. The opponent is down to 15. We just have a monster board of cards and take game one. Okay, so what are we learning? Kanger Bloom and Deep Cavern Bat can come in here. We are going to cut the Stalactite Stalker, and we're going to cut Blossoming Tortoise. This is to bring in a couple Canker Blooms. I might cut a non grim as well for Canker Bloom, because I want to destroy their artifacts. And then Bat just lets me check their hand and remove stuff from them. There could be other good reason to potentially bring in Skull for if they played more removal. But for the moment, I'm fine with just these two on game two. I always forget Draco exists. That's totally fair. Uh, we got two cards, Souls of the Lost, Power. Yeah, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna like Prowler turn two. Get Swarming Emergence ready to go. Fireworks is fine. Playing Prowler here. BFG, that's fair. I'll grab the one, anyways. Grand Spooter, eh? Go for Prowler again. And I'll play in the non vermin Let's say no attacks. 
I can actually sack the power stone to my souls of the lost. That's kind of fun. Here, they'll draw two cards here. That's fine. Suck that power stone play in a souls of the lost. I'm gonna go ahead and actually move myself here for four cards. Could punch in for two damage. I don't think it's worth it. I have a Tyvar in the bin? I do. We have a Tyvar and one Squirming Emergence has been milled, so we still have two in the deck. Sure. Opponent is going for Grand Spider that they can't cast. Love it. Uh, let's go Lanor Waste, cast, and Tyvar Jubilant Brawler. We're going to go ahead and mill three. And I'm going to bring back the Somniphage. Uh, sort of bigger, actually. Lurk is technically bigger. Cast in that. We're attacking in with everything. All right. It pops fine. Sure, you can attack Tyber, that is fine. Play base fire bricks. Sure, that's fine. Go ahead and bring back Tyber. Go ahead and minus three. Go ahead and grab back the Souls of the Lost. Let's go ahead and play in the Souls of the Lost. We'll sacrifice a permanent here. Uh, I will choose a Glamour Waste. Representing two 1920s. Announcement, that's fine. Move to combat. Back in. Need one creature to get through, so this is gonna have to be the soul of the lost. Sacrificing a permanent. I'm gonna get rid of my Dark Slick Shores. We're gonna untap a Soul of the Lost. I'm just gonna go ahead and mill myself here. Oof, double bat. Uh, Alright. But this is now three attackers, protects Tyvar. They have to make a Board of Critters. So we're potentially forcing another clay uh, fireworks here. Have a good one, Moss. May, no worries. Hope you have a great night, friend. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you next time. All right. Grand Spooter. Got more Power Stones. Spooter, go by. A little Spooter for opponent. Combat. Force blocks on everything. Take 
Tyvar. Bring back and soul of the lost and pass the turn. Jamil. Interesting, okay. Wedding announcement. It should just be the game, though. Forces him to block with the... Yep, Mishra's. Now they lose all their tokens. We play in our Restless Cottage. We untap one of our Souls of Lost and just keep Tiber at a nice, healthy four. And hold back the Cruel Somnification in case there is a board clear from the opponent so we can play it in and grab back another creature with Tiber. Okay. There's the Unstable Glyph Works. Is what we wanted to avoid. They are going for a Discover 4. The third wedding announcement. Oh, yikes. All right. Sure. Okay. Iron Craig, I'm not too worried about. It's 34 to 22. Yeah, this would be the kind of instance where, like, Bling would be really great. Kind of mill ourselves back again. I'm gonna grab enough soul of the lost. Play in that cruel somnophage. We'll pass the turn. Like if only they had trample. <laughs> It's just, it's so close, but I do think the fling variant does a lot more. All right. Thousand Moon Smithy is another blocker. Damn. Ah, another blocker. All right, yep. Yeah. To a Thran Spider too, wow. All right, Jamil, what you got? Maybe you c I mean, if we could get an Audacity, and I could always cut the Stalactite for the Audacity. We got 18 to 32. Pretty sure I don't win this one anymore. How do I beat Oppo's board at the moment? So whenever it casts a spell during their turn, they can't attack you or Planeswalkers. Yeah, that's just really rough. So, like, I have to minus two here. Probably grab a Soul of the Lost again. Let's attack with a big ol' 32-33. I would probably cut the Stalactite, I think. Cut Stalactite for Audacity, and then Squirming Emergence just brings back Audacity, and then that's lethal. Probably that would have to be the change to the deck. Because, like, then we have a way to bring back something, and Emergency either brings back a Tyvar or stuff. Oh, we are just uh, straight up getting full trades here. I will kill the 2020, that's fine. That's the turn. Yeah, just with Shamil, the value on Shamil, the cards left in the deck isn't fair for me. If this is an unstable glyph bridge, we're, we're on game three. No, it's just another Thousand Moon Smithy. I, I can't get through that. Well, we didn't really see any bats. I think I'm not going to worry about the Canker Blooms. Keep the bats in. Maybe Skullporn Nexus? Try Nexus. 
Uh, Nexus and a turtle. Tidebender, maybe. That gets really specific. If I mill it, it's not too great. I'd have to be holding a mana. I don't think I'm going to worry about it for game three, because I'm on the play. I have the bat. Yeah, I'm good with this hand. Get our turn two bat. Bat with Nexus. That feels pretty good. Uh, playing Dark Slick. Go bat here. What are we stealing? Wedding announcement. Unstable glyph. Fireworks. Take the bridge. Let's just go ahead and kick in the Goyf. Alright, I gotta pay the mana anyways, if it's not out of here. One, two, Goyf. Right. Not so amazing. Letting announcements fine. Then kick, kick. Much better. All right, attack for five. I'm playing the Nexus next turn. And the opponent can't depop us, which is good. Because if they do... The Nexus is going to be able to save us. Down to five, go for twenty one. Fireworks is fine. Planes, they go to seventeen. Go to nineteen, hitting the deck. Don't quite have the mana at least to transform those, so that's beneficial for us. But these wedding announcements are really keep the stuff going. I could bring back a Souls of the Lost. I'm not sure quite that's what I want to do. I could also animate the Vine Stock, but I'm short of mana for that. I think I'm going to start with Pyvar. We'll bring back a Soul of the Lost here. Those become three fours, but that's fine. So two of them. Get back a fun guy, it's a six six. See, he's a fun guy. That's a fun guy. I'm hilarious. Destroy evil. Sure. Like, whatever they kill, I just... The Nexus. Like, what do you... You have to kill the 6-6 six, six on token, right? Feels like the only thing you could kill. Now you only get one blocker. And then I just go Bitter Triumph, pay 3 life, get rid of the 3-3, three, three. back in, Lord Goy gets you in for 8, you go to 6, and we just untap the Souls of the Lost and pass the turn. There's that second win. Okay, discover again, sure. Fabrication Foundry isn't gonna do it, that's game three. 
Thank you so much for sticking around to the end video. I do hope you appreciated the game and the squirming gameplay that was with it. Certainly this deck was a lot of fun. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Stay updated on all the new decks for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan meta. And as always, keep believing. I'll catch you in the next video.